This is the Jail Ministry Podcast. The J-A-I-L, or Jesus Acts and Inmates Lives Ministry, is Christ-centered and provides programs focused on the prevention and intervention for the incarcerated. Jail Ministry also provides support to offenders, criminal justice professionals, victims, and their families. Thank you for your continued financial assistance. For more information, visit jailmen.org. Now, here's today's lesson. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, good night, whatever it is for you where you're at. It's, uh, well, it's still morning here. We're in Bell County, Texas. Glad you're with us again. Uh, this is Evangelist Eric Walton. We're continuing our message uh, about where do the three races come from. I titled this part, Noah and his three sons. And uh, you uh, follow along with me. Go ahead and turn your Bibles. Um, by way of uh, uh, um, review, 1 Corinthians 10.32, God says, Give no offense neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. So God only recognizes two groups of people, unsaved people, the Jews and the Gentiles, saved people, the church of God. And I'm doing this because of there's so much division. And, and, you know, the Bible says, Paul said, I never failed to declare unto you all the counsel of God. In other words, Paul had preached the whole Bible to the people he was dealing with, mainly the New Testament. And uh, at the time he was doing that, he would have to use the Old Testament to uh, explain it and so forth. But take your Bibles and turn to Genesis chapter 9 and we'll deal with Noah and his three sons. Now we're mainly going to look at verses 18 to 28. However, like anything, to, 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 even, get to even to get to that point, we need to look at verses 1 and uh, maybe uh, 8 and so forth. No, we're not going to look at 8. We're just going to look at 1 and then we're going to go down to 18. Uh, I want to preach 18 to 28. And when I say preach, it's teach. It's teach preaching. Preaching just means to motivate you to do something. So by the teaching of his word, it will move in your heart. I want us to see that it is an act of the devil for us to be sitting up here. And so many people are just focusing on the skin color of people. God does not care about your skin color. He cares about your spiritual status. Are you saved or are you unsaved? All saved people will be in heaven with God. All unsaved people will be in the lake of fire with the devil, the false prophet, and the beast. All right? Okay? Nobody, and it's not God's will that anybody go to hell. Okay? Uh, but Satan will be ruling and reigning down there. They'll all be hollering and screaming in the lake of fire. Black liquid fire. He'll give you a supernatural body to endure that. When you're down there talking about races, you won't be talking about races down there because it'll be pitch black dark for eternity. And, and not flames like a fire. It's liquid fire like nitroglycerin, which burns clear. You cannot see the flame. So, you know, um, we need to focus on what God does. Use your Bible to discern life. Use your Bible. Don't use these other people. Now, uh, I've already explained some when I said 1 Corinthians 10, 32, Jews, Gentiles, unsaved people, and the church of God. Notice how God did that. There's these two on, the, there's the and right here, Jews, Gentiles over here, and church of God over here. Church of God are saved people, all right? Now, I preached that, uh, another message uh, last week. Uh, now we're moving on. And let me read Genesis 9, 1 to you. We'll read that. And then we'll move on from there. By the way, 9-1 is very important. So God blessed Noah and his sons. It is important that you remember, he blessed his sons. Now watch what else he says. And said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Or repopulate it or replenish the earth. Amen. They are blessed, and no matter what, they are blessed. When Jacob tricked his daddy Esau, excuse me, not Esau, when Jacob tricked his daddy Isaac to get the, uh, the blessing, the Abrahamic blessing that was passed on from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, when Jacob tricked him, Isaac said, when Esau came in, he said, well, my brother uh, did this and did that, blah, blah, blah. He said, took the blessing too. He said, uh, and, 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 and Isaac said, and he shall be blessed. These boys are blessed. They are following their father and the values that their father, the Christian values, if I can use today's word, all right. 
it wouldn't have been called Christian, it would just be believers back then. Okay? Uh, God of uh, Yahweh or Adonai or something. Amen? Uh, uh, he he uh, uh, um, um, tricked him. He said, He shall be blessed. And these boys will be blessed. Noah is the king of the earth. Remember, Noah believed God. Uh, uh, 6 8. I am going to read it. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Grace. God's riches at God's, uh, at Christ's expense. Noah found grace in the eyes of Why did he find grace? Noah was trying to follow God. Everyone else on the whole entire planet, the whole world. And, and it is, uh, Bible scholars believe there were billions of people then. They had the worldwide flood. Uh, uh, and, and, and nine, they're coming off the boat. That's where we're going at today. Uh, uh, all those people were dead. Now Noah is the king of the earth. And because his sons followed their father who was following Christ. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. I'm telling y'all, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. His sons followed him. They obeyed him. They believed in him. Uh, believed in the God that he believed in. They're blessed. He would be like the king of the earth. They would be princes. And what did God tell them to do? You're blessed. He and his sons are blessed. Be fruitful and multiply. From you, the whole earth will be repopulated. What a blessing. Notice uh, uh, children born in wedlock who follow their daddy, uh, who, who have a godly daddy who's following the God of the Bible. Now, maybe where you're from, nobody does that. That's what they should do. 1 Corinthians uh, 13, 4. Whoremongers and adulterers will be judged. Whoremongering is uh, sleeping around and having babies out of wedlock. I know that a lot of that has gone on with the population of people that normally watch this that are in jail and prison. I say it frequently. I am not trying to be mean. I am telling you what God says. Because I knew what God said, I quit living that lifestyle. 45 years ago, I was 20. I quit living that lifestyle. I started trying to live the godly lifestyle. Obviously, I accepted Jesus in my heart. That didn't make me live the godly lifestyle. But not only did I, I listened and saw what it said. I said, man, I can't, I can't be doing what I, what I did before, just going around sleeping with anybody I want to and try to talk girls into sleeping with me, you know, and, and having casual sex, all right? You know, irresponsible sex and so forth, you know. So, so let's move on. And if you would, verse 24, and I'm going to pray after that when I said I was going to pray after verse 1. But let's read 24. So Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. The younger son he's talking about there is Ham. Okay, so they, they got a boat. Ham is saved. Japheth is saved. Shem is saved. Noah is saved. Their wives are saved people. Just because you're saved doesn't mean your son sin, don't sin. Ham is going to commit a grave or egregious sin. He is going to go in and uncover his father's nakedness. That is another way of saying, and I'll, I'll prove it when we get down to this point. I'll prove it. He is going to go in and uncover his father's nakedness. And, and, and when you read it over in Leviticus, what that's talking about, uncovering their nakedness. Now Moses wrote this. So Moses wrote this. 2,000 years after it happened, all right? And, and when Moses wrote it, it would have been 3,000 years ago from now, okay? But it's human history, and it goes on, okay? You know what? If I do certain things, that's going to go on. It's not going to stop, amen? Can God forgive me? Sure, he can forgive me. But if I go out and commit certain sins, it's going to be certain problems. It's going to bring in life, amen? So he, he woke from his wine and knew what his younger son had did to him. This is a controversial verse. This is, uh, I shouldn't say pa verse, the passage is controversial. Alright? What did his younger son do to him? He's talking about Ham. Ham went in and did something to his father. Some people say, what, did he just look at him? Voyeurism? Did he castrate him? No, it doesn't sound like he did that. Did he have incest with his daddy? Knew what he did to him? No. Did he have incest with his mama? Yes. And it all makes sense because whatever he did to him, verse 25, cursed be Canaan. Canaan is the son of Ham. And the reason Noah cursed him is because 
of the evil that his son had did. His son said, I'll go in and I'll usurp authority over my daddy. He's the king, but I'll be the king. By the way, this didn't, it, it isn't like one day the flood happened, the next day uh, uh, his daddy went out and planted a vineyard, and the next day his daddy got drunk from the vineyard, and the next day his son went in and saw him naked and did it. No, no, These, probably 20 or 30 years are going by here. All right? Time is going by. Maybe four or five years, but they had to, when they got off the boat, they got to go out and plant crops, build a house, this, that, and the other. First thing they would have did was they would have used the boat for shelter. They probably used some of the remnants from the boat to make their houses. And then uh, as they uh, had children, and, and these men uh, had many children because God made everything. They're real fertile. And it went on for a long period of time that they were real fertile so they could repopulate the earth. Now today there's 7.4 billion people on the earth. There's 1.4 billion in China alone. There's 1.5 billion in India alone, just in those two countries, and they're, and they're bordered with each other. You know, that's, that's half the world's population right there in those two countries. Now, let's pray. Father, I ask your blessing on this lesson. Anoint my lips from on high. Let me just say what needs to be said. I pray for all the students that they would listen to this and learn from it, dear Heavenly Father. So, in Christ's name, amen. So from these, these three sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the world was repopulated. Shem is the, uh, uh, go down with me if you would to verse 18. Now the sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now in my Bible, you don't have to turn the page, but Shem is the father of what we would call the Semitic people or the people who are in the Middle East. Now, I'm paying attention to skin color now when I say this also. Amen. I'm not doing that because that is it. God doesn't care about that. He cares about their spiritual status. All three of these boys are saved. And so, therefore, you would assume their sons would be saved and it would go on from there. Verse 21 of chapter 10. And the children born also to Shem. You can see the names of these sons in verse 25. To Eber were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg. Eber is the father of what we would know as the Jewish race. Abraham will come from Eber's line. From Abraham's line comes Isaac and comes Jacob. Comes Jesus Christ. Amen. Alright. Notice it. It's, it's a spiritual thing. Alright. Uh, uh, from Ham in chapter 10 verse 6 it says uh, the sons of Ham were Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. So we know from the maps and history, that is what we know as Northern Africa. And over time, they populated the whole of Africa and so forth. There's clearly mixing of the races over time. All right. Europeans came over. Blacks probably went over the other side. We, we know that from history and so forth. But, and so you have light-skinned blacks up in the northern part of Africa. You have brown-skinned people. And uh, uh, now when you get to the Semites, okay, the, the Shem, all right, you have an olive colored, not, not black or brown, not chocolate or vanilla, but an olive colored. But there is always mixing, amen? There's always mixing, all right? So let, let me go on with this thing uh, back in uh, 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 chapter 9. And, and I just gave you the verses for those two. Uh, Japheth is in 10-2, the sons of Japheth. And you can see where they uh, um, uh, sons of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Midai, Javon, Tubal, Meshach. Tubal and Meshach are up in what we know as Russia now today. Magog and Mede, those are people right down in Turkey and so forth. And at the time, they would be primarily light-skinned or white. The Hamites over time, they all went out. They were not three. His sons were not three different colors. They were one color. But the browner skin or the darker skin ones would survive better and do better down in Africa because it's hot. Amen. And, and the, the darker skin would not cause, you wouldn't have as much skin cancer and this, that, and the other. And that, that kind of skin would just work better down there. And over time, not, not millions and billions of years, but over two or three, four generations, you would end up with a darker race down there. In the European area where it's cold, you would end up with lighter people or white people and, and long hair because they need a lot of hair to stay warm. Short hair is down there in Africa. You don't need a lot of hair to stay warm down there. It's hot. You need less hair. So, and that's, what, that's just what would happen. The Semites are in the middle, and like I said, they're an olive color. And uh, the hair thing is in a situation there. Uh, they have both, you know. All right, let's go on with this thing. 
Now the sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And Ham was the father of Canaan. You know, I'm still in verse uh, 18. That's the last part. You'll, you'll see verse 22. And Ham, the father of Canaan. You're taught in every seminary and even just common sense. Why are they mix, mentioning that? Uh, why didn't they mention the name of the other boy's children? Ham's going to commit the sin, but Canaan is going to get cursed. That's how we know. I'm 99% sure I'm, I'm right on this. I'm not going to say 100, all right, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure of it. Canaan is the product because when we read down there in verse 23, 22 and 23, uh, um, uh, what, uh, Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. When it says, saw the nakedness of him. When I get down there, we'll turn over to Leviticus chapter 20. And verse 11 says, if you see the nakedness of your, of your father's wife, your mother, all right, you've seen your father's nakedness. You've uncovered your father's nakedness. Because the woman comes under the man. She's under his protection and everything like that. This is his way of saying, I've conquered the king of the world. That's why he went outside and told his two brothers, I've conquered the king of the world. I am now the king. His daddy cursed uh, Canaan, his son, all right, because he can't curse his, can't, can't curse Ham. Ham's blessed. We saw that in verse one, all right. That's where that comes in at, and so forth, you know. And uh, um, God is foreshadowing and letting you know something is going on here. You would have to know all the scriptures, all right, have an understanding of all that to see how and what was done. God allowed. Um, Abraham's wife is also his half sister, Sarah. Um, Genesis chapter 12 and forward, 11, 12 and forward. And you think, well, I thought that was incest. That was immoral. That was un back then they could do it. It's not till Moses writes down in Leviticus where he says, no more doing that. No more close relatives. Nobody who's near of kin. The closest you can marry in the Bible is your first cousin. Um, where did. Uh, 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 What's their names? Uh, Cain and Abel get their wives from. They were their sisters, Adam and Eve's daughters. Well, they're Adam and Eve's sons. You could do that then. All right. The, the bloodlines were pure and it would not cause the deformities that we would have now today. All right. So let me let me stick with this thing. Amen. And Ham, the father of Canaan, verse 19, these three were the sons of Noah. And from these, the whole earth was populated. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I do want to say it. What a blessing, because the daddy was godly. While you're in jail or prison, become the man that God wants you to be. Start reading your Bible every day. Don't, don't be flipping all over the place. Read all the way through a whole book. Get what God wants you to get from that. God is speaking to you. All right, this stuff of flipping all over the place. Uh, you need to write down questions. Don't try to speed read either. Read your Bible. Learn and understand what it's saying. I'm showing and going through this one verse at a time. We, we, we've only really did one or two verses. And we're probably 20 minutes into the message. Quit trying to speed read. Write down questions. Try to understand what God is saying. That's why he, put, he gave you this book. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Learn what it says. You know? And, and, and uh, 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 when I read those things about whoremongering and all this stuff, I said, oh, I got I to quit doing that. God has cursed that behavior. I don't want my children cursed. Noah believed God because he did that and his children followed him and they did. His sons followed him. Guess what? Now they're getting to repopulate the whole earth. What a blessing. What an honor that God has bestowed upon these people. Ham screwed it up. It all started with a godly daddy. Not with a godly woman. With a godly daddy. Children that go that have a daddy that goes to church, 70, 80 percent of them also go to church for the rest of their life. Children that have a mama that goes to church and daddy doesn't, only about 13 percent of them go to church for the rest of their life. What does that prove? The man is the leader. That's the way God made things. All right. I know that doesn't fit with our culture now today. Our culture is very ungodly and uh, uh, terrible and destructive. All right, quit following the culture and follow the Bible. Amen. All right, so so verse uh, nineteen. These three were the 
the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was populated. Verse 20, And Noah began to be a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. All right? There is nothing wrong with being a farmer. There is nothing wrong with planting a vineyard. There's nothing wrong with making grapes. There's nothing wrong with making fermented wine. Getting blitz drunk where you're out doing all sorts of crazy stuff and blacking out and fighting and carrying on and you don't even know what happened. That's Proverbs 23 drunk. That's wrong. This right here, God does not rebuke Noah for making wine and, and uh, getting a little tipsy. Verse uh, 21 then he drank of the wine and, and became uncovered in his tent. See, he didn't go out and do a bunch of crazy stuff. He went home and laid down. He probably was drinking the wine and sitting down in his easy chair, sipping him some wine. By the way, the strongest wine they could make back then was 3 to 5%. You have to have the ability to distillate to make stronger than that. All right, but this natural, natural fermentation and so forth is only going to be 3 to 5%. It isn't going to be real powerful. All right. Because of my background of uh, drugs and alcohol and whoremonger and all that stuff, there's a lot of stuff I don't do. I don't really drink. If you offer me a glass of wine, I'd I take it and I'd drink it. Which I'd sip a little bit, you know, and all this stuff. But that's all I do. I don't drink beer. I, I, even if I, even I, if a drinker, I wouldn't drink beer. Okay, I don't really particularly care for it. I don't particularly care for hard drinks. All right, you know. But I drink it. I peppermint schnapps. I like. There's a few of them, you know, back in the day. But basically, I've stayed away from all that stuff because all my uncles were a bunch of drunks. Okay? And, and you sit there and think, well, wait a minute, your bloodline's given to be an alcoholic. Okay? <laughs> Not just getting drunk in your tent. All right? And I said, nope. When I got saved, let me leave that alone too. So uh, then he drank, verse 21, of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered in his tent. All right? Uh, when it says his tent, it could also say, her tent. All right. Mrs. Noah was in there too. Amen. She probably had a, probably sitting around having some glasses of wine with his wife and they're laughing and joking and uh, enjoying each other's private company and this, that, and the other. And, uh, you know, they may have uh, uh, both been naked, but the Bible only tells us about his nakedness here. And in a second, we'll turn over there and look at the other one uh, where it says it in uh, um, uh, Leviticus chapter 20. So, Let's see here. All right. Uh, verse 22, And Ham, the father of Canaan. There we saw it. I know I mentioned it before from uh, 18, but here it is. Saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Now you would think, that. why would you go to, if you, if you opened the bathroom door, not accidentally, you opened the bathroom door and you were unaware that your daddy was in there taking a shower or was in there, he, had, he was done taking a shower and he was driving, drying off or getting ready, to dry, get, getting ready to dry off and he was standing there and he was butt bare naked, you'd say, oh, sorry, shut the door real quick. If your mother was in there, this is gross, and she was naked, the same thing happened, you would go, oh, gross, you know, shut the door. You don't want to see your mother or father's nakedness. That's unusual. That's weird. It's perverted. Amen. So there's more going over here than, than that. Now I told y'all we were going to turn to Leviticus chapter 20. Hold your place here. Turn to Leviticus 20. If you cannot turn as fast as I'm going, write down the verses and you can look back at them later on. So we're in Leviticus chapter 20. And verses uh, 11. The man who lies with his father's wife, which has to be his mother. Okay? He's not talking about his father had another wife. All right? He's talking about his, th that one. Has uncovered his father's nakedness. Well, wait a minute. He just said right here, saw the nakedness of his father. He uncovered his father's nakedness is the Bible's way of saying he saw his mother's nakedness. And he has this child, a child is born out of it, named Canaan. Remember, we don't know how much time periods are passing here. Moses, God told Moses what happened uh, up on Mount Sinai when he was up there for 40 days and 40 nights. And he recorded all this stuff for us. So, periods of time are going by. By the way, every time they copulated, uh, pretty much, remember he said, uh, uh, they're blessed and be fruitful and multiply. Back in verse 1, that's why I read that to you. It was no doubt when Ham had, had uh, sex with his mama, Noah's wife, all right, 
And, and that, that by that, by virtue of that, that is seeing the nakedness of his father because he's uncovered his mother. Okay? And remember, God only expects you to have sex with one person, your spouse. The person you are married to. Uh, uh, men and women. All right? Man with woman, woman with man. Not man and man and woman and woman. God does not recognize homosexual marriage. All right? Because it's perverted. Okay? That God did not make it that way. And, and it is no accident. They are willfully doing that of their own sin nature. All right. So, so he has this thing here of his father. And he told his two brothers. Thank you. Five minutes. So, so what's happening here, why did he go out and tell his brothers about this? Okay. Hey, I just had sex with mama. I uncovered daddy's nakedness. Now, I am the man. I'm the king. That's why he's going and telling them. That's why this is happening. Okay. Now, uh, we looked at that. All right, and we saw what it said over there. Now, you, you may have to look at it again. The man who lies with his father's wife has uncovered his father's nakedness. When the translators translated and said his father's tent, it could have said her tent. All right, that you could have used either one of them. They say male because of it is a male-dominated society, and that's the way the Bible works. All right, God is going by the men. Okay, so uh, um, uh, and and that's why he told his two brothers. He wanted them to know that. Now you might say, well, how do you know that, Brother Walton? Well, you go over to uh, 2 Samuel 16, 22. Uh, David's son, Absalom, is pulling a coup d'etat, trying to take over the kingdom from his father. And in 16, 22, to show that he's the man. All right, I'm going to start at uh, verse uh, 21. And Ahithophel said to Absalom, go into your father's concubines, his second wives whom he has left to keep the house and all Israel will hear that you have abhorred by you are abhorred by your father then the hands of all who are with you will be strong in other words go in and have sex with your father's secondary wives and man there's there is no coming back from this this is I am the new king of Israel amen I am the boss now back over here let me read the last verse 22 so they pitched a tent for Absalom on top of the house Okay, on the roof. They had flat roofs in that part of the world. And Absalom went into his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. He's saying, David ain't the king no more. I am. And I just proved it by going in, uh, conquering his wife and having sex with him. Amen. All right, we only got three minutes. So, so I hope you see these things. By the way, it is gross. It is vile. It is wicked. Uh, the stuff we see and hearing going on here and so forth. All right. And um, um, if, I, if we had time, some people used to believe that black people were cursed. And if you read the Bible right here in verse 25, back in chapter 9, uh, then he said, Cursed be Canaan, servant of servants, he shall be to his brothers. Canaan was cursed. Solomon f finished the curse off. And I want to say it was in chapters 9 to 10 of 1 Kings. All right, uh, Verse 26, and he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem. And may Canaan be his servant. Canaan was destroyed. The land that Canaan uh, was in charge of was what we know as, uh, uh, not modern day Israel, but Israel back in King David and Joshua's time. Way back then. From the Euphrates River all the way down to the Nile River and the Mediterranean was this side. And the Jordan River was the border over here. That was Canaan land. Two, two minutes. All right. Um, I want to go back and uh, uh, kind of review a little bit. Uh, verse 22, we see that also in verse 18. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Saw the nakedness, that's the same as saying uh, uh, he laid with his mother. He's uncovered his father's nakedness. That's why Canaan was cursed. Amen. Uh, we already talked about where the three skin colors come from, not three races. Three skin colors. Ham went down to Africa. Japheth went up to Europe where it's cold. One of them's white and one of them's black. In the middle is the Semites, which is where the Jews come from, which is Israel, and so forth. Amen? Now, verse, uh, uh, why did he go out and tell his two brothers? He wanted to show them, I'm the new king. What were some of the main things you ought to take away from this? Saved and unsaved. Your spiritual status not your skin color is what God is paying any attention to and the world shouldn't pay any attention to it as well let's all pray now 
If you're not saved and you want to be saved, pray a prayer like this. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, I am a sinner and I'm in need of a Savior. And I believe your Son, Jesus Christ, is the Savior of the world. He died for all mankind, wherefore by one man sin entered the world and death by sin. And also by one man, Jesus Christ, was the redemption brought back from the slave market. Please save me. I believe. Please forgive me. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you. We'll see you again next week and finish this up.